There's supposed to be a terrifying dragon living in the ice passages underneath Ice World. Travellers claim to have seen it throughout the centuries, but there's never been any proof. The Twelve galaxies are your home. Take my golden sovereign. Your planet obliterated. You're too late, Cain, for your revenge. Time has flowed by. No! It shall not be! Danger. Unfiltered sunlight. You will do as you're told, unless of your lippy or out in your ear. Hope the dragon gets you in the night. Dragon? What dragon? That's just a legend. There's supposed to be a terrifying dragon living in the ice passages underneath Ice World. I knew there must be a reason why you brought us here. You want to see the dragon, don't you? Oh, really, Mel, it's fascinating. Travellers claim to have seen it throughout the centuries, but there's never been any proof. <laughs> like the Loch Ness Monster? Loch. Loch. You're going to go looking for the dragon? Absolutely. Oh, cool. Can I come too? Why don't you get into trouble with your boss? Oh, I'm fed up with being a waitress. Oh, go on, Professor. Let me come too. Well, I don't see why not. Ace! <laughs> and can we search for the treasure too? Treasure? Yeah. The dragon's supposed to be guarding a fabulous treasure. Oh, <laughs> treasure? What treasure? You don't want to go believing in myths and legends, Doctor. Who asked you? We're not talking to you. No, if you want my opinion, all this talk of treasure and dragons, it's all a load of old space dust. Well, if you're so convinced it's all rubbish, why have you been burning holes in this treasure map for the last two days? He says he lost the money in a game of cards. I know he lost the money in a game of cards. The game was fixed. What about the map? He's convinced it's genuine. Excellent. He'll soon realise that if he wants to see his spacecraft again, he has no alternative but to go after the treasure. And when he does, I shall be with him every step of the way. There's just one thing. Yes? He appears to have two colleagues. Colleagues? I thought he sold his entire crew. They're not from his crew. Space travellers, a man and a girl. Do you want them eliminated? Not for the moment, I think. There's no reason for them to suspect that the seal on the treasure map contains a tracking device. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Looks like something from a jumble sale to me. Oi, there's nothing snide about this document. If you don't want to go and believe nothing you get from him, Professor, he probably bought 200 of them in a job lot. Do you mind? This is the real McCoy, this is. It comes from an unimpeachable source. What's that, then? That means it is beyond reproach or question. I know what unimpeachable means, bird bath. But what makes you so certain this map's pedigree is 24 carat? Because I acquired it from a man of character and distinction. How? I won it in a chess match. You won it playing cards. Doctor, it's a waste of time. He won it in a card game. An honest transaction. The man was desperate not to lose this map, so I know it's something very, very tasty. It shows the lower levels of Ice World. No one goes down there anymore. Too dangerous. The ice garden, the singing trees. But like <laughs> the girl says, Doctor, it's too dangerous. Where's your sense of adventure, Glitz? What, do you want to go here? The, the Lake of Oblivion? Where? Death of eternal darkness? Oh. Dragon fire? <laughs> I should stop at home if I were you, Doctor. Oh, this sounds brill. My sentiments precisely. What's your name, incidentally? Everyone calls me Ace. Oh, how do you do? I'm the Doctor, and this is my friend, Mel. And we're really going to go looking for dragons? Too risky, if you ask me. Nonsense, Glitz. Time for a quick adventure, then back for tea. Ace, that's the spirit, Doctor. Hang about. You can't go without me. That's my map. And I don't want these girls coming along either. What? It's too dangerous. Professor. And since it's my map. Right. You male chauvinist build bag. Just you wait. Oh, nice. And I was so looking forward to meeting a dragon. Oh, it's all right, Doctor. You go on ahead. I'll wait here. And if Glitz burns his fingers in the dragon's fire, then it serves him right. It's just you and me then, Doctor. Quite a little expert with explosives, I hear. Yeah, so what if I am? Excellent. I like women with fire in their bellies, don't I, Bellard? I might yet have a use for you. Oh, yeah? What makes you think I'd be interested? Oh, I can be very persuasive. I'm not frightened of you. Good. Because I shall need people like you in my army of mercenaries. You what? Think about it. 
traveling through the 12 galaxies. The diamond sparkle of meteorite showers. The rainbow flashes of an ion storm. Think about it. Don't listen to him, Ace! How old are you? Six, 18. 18, eh? No home to call your own. The 12 galaxies are your home. Come with me. I understand you. It won't be like that, Ace. Don't believe him. Join me. Take my golden sovereign. Take the sovereign. Don't do it, Ace. Please, don't do it. You've heard altogether too much. Freeze her. Take the coin. Take the coin. Right, freeze! I mean, don't freeze, I mean, stand still and let Mel go. You stupid girl. You think it's that easy to walk away from me? Do you feel like arguing with a can of deodorant that registers nine on the Richter scale? I'm sure. Don't you trust me? Well, I don't know. What with the dragon and all that? The dragon. It's just something to frighten little children with. It's like witches and goblins. There ain't no such thing. slip on board. I'll do my best. Well, go on then. Away you go. Excuse me, what's your attitude towards the nature of existence? For example, do you hold any strong theological opinions? I think you'll find most educated people regard mythical convictions as fundamentally animistic. I see. That's a very interesting concept. Personally, I find most experiences border on the existential. Well, how would you reconcile that with the imperial critical belief that experience is at the root of all phenomena? I think you'll find that a concept can be philosophically valid, even if theologically meaningless. So what you're saying is that before Plato existed, someone had to have the idea of Plato? Oh. You've no idea what a relief it is for me to have such a stimulating philosophical discussion. There are so few intellectuals about these days. Tell me, what do you think of the assertion that the semiotic thickness of a performed text varies according to the redundancy of auxiliary performance codes? Yes. <laughs> years away from this place. I wouldn't touch those controls if I were you. Wicked! And the bilge bag said this was too dangerous for girls. This spacecraft is mine. 
Hang on. The 72 hours aren't up yet. You said if I could get hold of the Grotsits, I could have the Nosferatu back. Then I shall just have to make sure you don't manage to find the money in time. I shall have to make very sure. Hello? Not interrupting anything, am I? What are you doing here? That's a very difficult question. Why is everyone around here so preoccupied with metaphysics? I think she's going to kill us, Doctor. Ah, an existentialist. Quiet! Only one of us can leave Iceworld aboard the Nosferatu. And one way or the other, it's going to be me. What about the boss, Mr. Kane? Does he know of your little enterprise? Kane doesn't own me. Oh, I think he does. I think he bought you like he buys everything in Ice World. What would you know about it? I think he bought you a long time ago. He paid 17 crowns for each of Glitz's crew. How much did he pay for you? Was it worth it? Were you worth it? That's what I sold myself for, Kane's mark. I ought to cut my hand off for doing it. Go on, then. Kill me! Oh, come on, Doctor. We've got the Nosferatu back. Let's get out of here. No, Glitz, you can't go on stealing everything you want, like this Stradivarius and that Dutch master. Pay Kane back his debt. Even if it costs a thousand crowns, ten thousand crowns, pay back the debt. But as for you and your debt to Kane, I don't think you'll be able to pay it off. Ever. The whole of eternity has held its breath for this moment. But no one must ever see your work. It exists. That is enough. No one can ever look upon your work and live. Gaze on it and die fulfilled. Try to imagine where I really came from. I dreamed that one day everything would come right. I'd be carried off back home. Back to my real mum and dad. Then it actually happened. And I ended up here. Ended up working as a waitress again. Only this time I couldn't dream about going nowhere else. There wasn't nowhere else to go. One day, when we return home, I shall erect colossal statues in your honor. Current ambient temperature minus 10 Celsius. Target temperature minus 193 Celsius. Cabinet temperature dropping. There's something I've never told anyone. Do you promise not to laugh and not to tell no one? Of course. It's my name. It's not really Ace. My real name's Dorothy. That's how I knew they couldn't be my real mum and dad. My real mum and dad would never have given me a naff name like Dorothy. <laughs> Come on. Minus 150. Minus 160. Minus 170. Cabinet temperature rising. Minus 160. Mel, you've got my umbrella. Oh, Doctor! Professor! Bill Swag! Oh, stop now, 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 stop this squabbling. There's no place for animosity on a serious scientific undertaking. Do you mean the dragon? Well, it's not so much a dragon, it's more of a semi-organic vertebrate with a highly developed cerebral cortex. And it's got laser beams in its eyes that tried to kill us. Yeah. Really? Well, I wonder what you did to annoy it. It just came at us, Professor. No warning! Really? Well, let's see what this vertebrate with laser beams has got to say on itself, shall we? <gasps> Hello. Where might you have popped up from there? She's been sent by Kane, Doctor. He's got messes of them frozen in his deep freeze. Cryogenesis, eh? Hang about. I'd recognise that mutinous expression anywhere. Friend of yours, is he? Podovkin, old son. You've no idea how pleased I am to see you again. It's no good glitz. He says he's been cryogenically frozen. Then what about the time we captured that space freight and loaded up with all that natural fruit alcohol? We got well dehydrated that night, didn't we, eh? It's no use. Deep cryogenics freezes the neural pathways. Oh, come on, old son. A joke's a joke. It's me, Sabalong Glitz. It's completely impossible for him to recall any events prior to cryogenesis. I remember. Except of cases of overwhelming hatred or anger. I remember how you always had the best of our pickings. <laughs> I don't recall. I remember. 
I remember how you sold our entire crew to Kane to be frozen as mercenaries. Oh, no, no, come on, old son. Don't go jump me to conclusions. Well, he was a friend of yours. You're more of an acquaintance, actually. <laughs> Don't mean you any harm. You understand? It's friendly. This is to go with it, Professor. Wow. Let's see what our new friend wants to show us, shall we? At last. After three thousand years. Bring it here. 3,000 years, eh? Long enough for an entire civilization to have come and gone. Are you some kind of idiot? You know, for someone who's had the patience to wait around for 3,000 years, you seem to be in rather a hurry suddenly. What's all this 3,000 years? 3,000 years since you were exiled here from Pro Amon along with the creature. Who are you? Just a traveler. What do you know of Pro Amon? We all know. The creature showed us on the hologram. Oh. Archives. I should have destroyed them. No, no, no. I should keep them for souvenir value, along with the ice garden. But why was the creature doing time as well? The biomechanoid was my jailer. Look around you. The controls lying dead, waiting for an energy source. The dragon fire is that energy source. And without it, you were powerless. They thought they could imprison me on this wretched planet by implanting the power source inside that creature. They shall learn of their folly. And a living creature was created as the key to your prison. I consider journeying round from the cold, dark side of Svartos to the sun-blistered surface on the other side, where I would quickly die. Now, with the dragon fire, I have the power to return to Proamon and exact my revenge. You, girl, bring me the dragon fire. No, I'm not going to lift a finger to help you. Melanie! Don't listen to her, she doesn't mean it. Donut. Give him the treasure. I'm 16. I'm too young to be freeze-dried. Oh, come on, Mel. This is no time to be fastidious. Doctor! Look, let me explain. Shut up! Wasting my time. The dragon fire is mine now. You can either give it to me alive, or I shall take it from your dead bodies. The logic is inescapable. Place it in the circuit. My hour of vengeance. Vengeance on whom, Cain? You're too late. All your mercenaries are dead. I can soon find more. But where will you find another home planet? We're talking in riddles, Doctor. Pro Amon is my home planet. Was your home planet. Take a look at your navigational equipment. It's fully operative now. There must be something wrong. Sadly not. Your planet, your people, your entire race were destroyed 1,000 years after you were exiled. No, no, it's not possible. Look at the sun of Proamon. When you left, it was a cold red giant surrounded by freezing planets. There's nothing there but a neutron star. Your sun turned supernova 2,000 years ago, and all its planets were engulfed in the explosion. Your people were annihilated. Your planet obliterated. You're too late, Cain, for your revenge. You have no home. Time has flowed by. No! It shall not be! Danger. Unfiltered sunlight. What's he doing? It's scorching. Oh! business time. It delights in frustrating your plans. All Cain's bitterness and hatred thwarted by a quirk of time. No, I meant, I suppose it's time I should be going. Oh. Time that I left. Yes, well, you could be right. <laughs> time for you to go. Before I go... It's business time. 
Doctor. Well, you must I, go. Before I go, I'd just like to There's say. No point, Mel. No point hanging around wasting time. No, I'm not going until I've said my piece. I just want to. There's no to say time, that. Mel. All right, you win. I do. I usually do. I'm going now. That's right. Yes, you're going. <laughs> You've gone for ages. You're already gone. You're still here. You just arrived. I haven't even met you yet. It all depends on who you are and how you look at it. Strange business, time. Goodbye, Doctor. I'm sorry, Mel. <laughs> Think about me when you're living your life, one day after another, all in a neat pattern. Think about the homeless traveller in his old police box. His days like crazy paving. Who said anything about home? I've got much more crazy things to do yet. Well, we've officially renamed my new spacecraft the Nosferatu 2. Just crack a bottle of ye old carbonated fruit alcohol over the bowels and next stop Sunny Perivale, eh, Sprog? Suppose so. Have you got room for another one? You Perivale bound as well? Well, I was thinking of going a bit further. How, how much further? How much further are you going? Hang on, half a millisecond. Excellent, yes. Mel can keep you out of trouble, Glitz. And that means no more dodgy deals. Thanks a billion, Doctor. <laughs> Glitz. Ace doesn't have anywhere to go. Answer's an idyllic place, Paravale. It's got lush green fields and a village blacksmith Doctor, and... Doctor, she comes from the 20th century. Oh. Come on, Mel, extract your digit. I'll send you a postcard. But I don't have an address. Oh, I'll put it in a bottle and throw it into space. It'll reach you. In time. Ace, where do you think you're going? Perivale. Ah, yes, but by which route? The direct route with glitz or the scenic route? Well, do you fancy a quick trip round the 12 galaxies and then back to Perivale in time for tea? Ace! But there are three rules. One, I'm in charge. But whatever you say, Professor. Two, I'm not the Professor, I'm the Doctor. Whatever you want. And the third? Well, I'll think up the third by the time we get back to Perivale. 